Hello dear ones, it's Alice, I'm of the stars. I have a story to tell you based on astral stories and very deep dream time realm uh, dreams that came up last night. And I've already recorded it. I, I found when I recorded it that uh, I was figuring it out as I recorded it. So uh, in several instances during the recording, I went back to events that had happened prior and attempted to explain. So I'd like to apologize for the disjointed nature of this video and hope that something more easily understood comes of it in times to come. It's a story about the dark love triangle. Last night I had a series of dreams that were pretty traumatic for me uh, that did not have to do with me. They were sort of looking into other people's dream realms and I, that happened, that visualization of other people's dreams happened through concentration on the my own eighth chakra and clearing of my own eighth chakra while lying on my back in corpse pose. Um, so one story went like this. There was a man who had very little memory of his mother when he was young. She must have left the family when he was very young. And so in his early, very early stages of youth, he was missing the maternal, like, protective uh, feeling of a mother being there, although his father was there, his mother was not, apparently. And that, um, that lack of the mother has led him all his life to search for the mother in, in all of the people that he, that, he, that he sees. And it has colored his um, interactions with men and women and in such a way that he has created a series of dream images uh, that he superimposes on all the relationships he has in life uh, to to try to find the the maternal energy and unite it with the father energy at the same time as he's looking for a romantic love. Um, and I've hesitated to talk about this um, um, because it's catching. And other people can catch the same. I've, I've in fact seen other people catching this same like um, malware sequence, very complicated one, regarding dark love triangles, which I've written about in past times. Um, so last night, I'll just talk about last night's dream. Um, it had to do with a man and a woman, a married man and woman, in fact the same two that were in the dream about the severed wedding ring finger. Uh, and his hope was to allow the woman to have a sexual relief so that their marriage could go on even though the father was very, very angry. That makes you think that maybe what might have happened in his youth with regard to the mother had to do with his own father's a, a violent anger against her, uh, if you get me. So, so I will call that other man the third man, and then there's a the husband and wife. Um, so he was cogitating in his dream world. He got together with this couple, and he was cogitating about what to do about it to allow her to feel safe, to have, to be able to release her sexual energy that night, and at the same time to prevent the, the husband from venting his violent, angry, uh, subconscious imagery in real life upon her. And the thing that his, his dreaming eighth chakra self came up with was, um, uh, maybe you'll make more sense out of this than I do. It's still not clear. Uh, he needed to divert the energy, the angry energy of the husband, and then make love to the wife 
uh, from his heart chakra. So that might mean that he looks upon, say, if those two represent his father and mother in the unresolved childhood trauma, that might mean that in his relationships with women, he's looking towards a mother lover, like a, a, a mother Oedipal complex. Uh, and in this case, um, he's looking to, uh, through his loving interaction on the astral plane with the wife, he's looking to relieve her sexual uh, energy, which was damaged that day by uh, an, uh, uh, kind of a rape situation uh, where the husband became very, very angry uh, and then demanded to have anal intercourse with his wife. And so the woman in question felt that she had been uh, had that she had been angrily assaulted in a manner of speaking, even though the man was her husband. So there's that. A lot happened yesterday and last night, it seems, on the astral plane. And uh, I think this had to do with a new mantra that I've uh, invented, kind of a mantra that says, um, may no one hear anything at all from, from me, something like that. And that then creates a, a quietness in my own energy field. And so people start instead of projecting their negative emotions on me and other people, they start hearing what their own personal issues are, especially amongst married couples, and then they, they start resolving it, and there may be a lot of unresolved anger on both sides um, that are projected towards other people, such as light workers, so that the marriage can continue uh, without um, straining it through venting of negative emotions. Where was I? <laughs> so, so anyway, back to the story. Uh, the third man knew about all that, about the, the anger and the, he, he, some of the, the eighth chakra does this. It's, it's very wise and it knows the meta programs, karma and so forth. It knows the major plays that are keeping people on earth and uh, trying to figure out certain types of soul wisdom. And it knows this about other people's meta programs too, it seems in some cases. Or maybe those two are, were interacting because of the childhood trauma of the third person and being similar to the trauma that this married couple had uh, gone through yesterday. <laughs> you can see this is a reach for me. Okay, so, so the third person had the idea that he could... He could feel loving thoughts, uh, sexual thoughts, towards the wife and at the same time ask the husband to relate to him in a sexual way uh, as if he were sodomizing the third person at the same time as the third person was having, uh, creating a sexual relief situation for the wife. And this I call a dark love triangle when three people have to be involved in what might otherwise be a, an intimate mating situation. Even sparrows and other types of birds have the ability to mate together for life. And people have that ability too. Of course, sometimes there are terrible upsets in this, the third dimension. Sometimes someone passes on. Sometimes a person is lost to another person because of physical distance. All kinds of things can happen that break the lifetime mating bond. But, but still the bond exists and the, the chance exists for the person to express that bond through union with another person, you see. And this, in my feeling, is the most clear-cut and straightforward way of relating to another person with regard to sex. It has its basis in, in biology. 
It has its basis in the feral drives, and that adheres one person to another in a mating uh, in a mating drive that that carries with it both the subconscious and the conscious mind, and unites the person as one whole loving being, feeling that love towards one other person. That's what I feel. That's why I, the dark love triangle is an is an upset to me. And I'm trusting that those of you with greater psychological and psychiatric experience than I have to, to, to try and figure out what's up with this and to try and help those many people that I've observed that do experience throughout their lives the dark love triangle. All right, you all, that's enough jawing for one day. I'll talk to you later.